If you're as curious as we are, every time we see an Airstream, we wonder what it looks like on the inside. Well, today, we're gonna show you what our Airstream, our 23-foot Globetrotter, looks like on the inside. Follow us. Come on in. Leave your shoes outside, please. We have a 23-foot Globetrotter front bed queen. We prefer the queen bed. I know the majority of people like the twin beds because it makes you feel like the coach is a little longer, but we'd like to cuddle. So come on in, let's check out the bedroom. So like I said, here is our queen bed. Check it out. I can walk around. Just gotta be careful up here. Watch your head. This bedroom has three windows that open, giving you great cross ventilation. Check out the storage. The above bed storage. And I love that we have those uh, mirrors in the back so you can see exactly what's in the bins. Now these bins we did use in our old trailer in our Tab 400. Highly recommend these. They're actually in our uh, Amazon uh, store. There's a link down below. And everything stays in place. So that's a great piece of storage. So one of the things we love about Airstreams, all the windows. Look at this. Great view, go all the way around. They open up even more. And then it's time for Betty Bye. They just close up nice and simple, like so. They close up just like that and they're room darkening. On my side of the bed, we have a little uh, night table, I like to call it. So I keep all my essential stuff here, in my little container right by the bed. And then we have uh, two USBs and a 110 outlet on this side. On my husband's side, we don't have anything like that. So we got to figure out what to do. So now you're wondering about storage. Let's check this out. You ready for this? Our underbed storage is incredible. These two bins came with the trailer. Then we also have other little side cubbies where I keep extra towels and our backpacks. And we even have space in the back that I'm not even using yet. My husband also did move the uh, lithium batteries into the coach, so that is taking up a little space, but that's okay. And we added these collapsible bins to the front of the bed. Now. I like to call these our uh, foot lockers, and that's just where we throw in like our sweatshirt that we wore, you know, maybe on a little stroll around the campground. Just a fun place to grab things when we're uh, on the go. And when you're done and ready to close the bed, nice and simple. Just hold on to the edge, don't slam it down. That's it. Now the only um, access that we can reach without the bed being raised is this side one right here. It's great for uh, some of our paperwork. This bed, when we first got it, came with a beautiful duvet cover and some nice accent pillows, but we decided to give it our own little style. Now you may be wondering, where else do we keep our clothes? Okay, when you travel, you need a lot of clothes, right? Not really, but we have the option to pack a lot of clothes because we actually have two closets. This first one, just using it for some of my hanging shorts and then Look at these things. They fit great down here. And I'm able to store all our undergarments over here. Is that TMI? Oh yeah, great hook. On this side, we also have two drawers. Now I added dividers that fit perfectly. I wish they were a little higher, but it's okay because everything is just the way we need it to be, his and hers. And on the other side, we have another wardrobe. Now this one's a little bit longer. Uh, oh. And you'll see, we have a lot of hanging clothes here, along with those bins on the bottom and on the top. Plenty of room for everything you may want to need. Some of the specifics of the mechanics that work up here in the front end of the Airstream 23 foot Globetrotter is it comes with the ducted air conditioning system. So 1300, uh, 13, yeah, 13,500 BTU air conditioning system that is ducted. 
So you have your spinning ducts up here, all LED re recessed lights in the ceiling, and a multi-speed fantastic fan with a rain sensor cover. It also gives you a blackout screen here. So you can, we don't use this feature very much because the light doesn't really bother us, but it does give you the ability to close this uh, if there's too much light coming in. Um, <clears throat> Uh, multi-speed here, three speeds and also a temperature setting so you can kind of set it the way that you want to want it to come on and off specific at a specific uh, temperature inside the coach. On the right hand side over here we have our television set on a travel bracket allows you to disconnect and it's a little finicky disconnect and move it around you can rotate it all the way around if you want to see it in the dinette and or uh, turn it out, angle it more towards the bed. Two things you have to note in here is that it is uh, runs only off the inverter. It is not a 12 volt system. So you need shore power or run your inverter. You also have a wine guard signal booster on the top, TV antenna. So when you are out uh, in the wild looking for over the air, you want to have this illuminated. When you hook yourself up to a uh, campground, wife, uh, campground cable system, you want to turn this off. Otherwise, it'll freeze out the signal on that. So it uh, also has nice dimmer switches for the multiple uh, lights that are available up here in the front of the coach. <clears throat> there are some mechanicals located up under here behind this panel. is going to be your hot water heater system tucked in there. So unfortunately that uh, would be a great storage area, but uh, I got to keep your mechanicals located up in there. In the front under the bed is where the 1000 watt sine wave inverter is located as well as the 12 volt system set in there. So that's going to be um, in this closet. When we got this, it came with the Airstream Connect, but I swapped out to use our Pepwave router. Uh, we already have a system set up on there with that. That gives us our streaming capability, our uh, cell phone boost, our Wi-Fi boost, as well as GPS tracker locator, so we can uh, follow the camper um, in case it decides to go for a trip without us. We'll be able to track it down. Next, we have our dinette slash living relaxing area. So this is super comfortable. You can move this table, rotate it, and it drops down, and we'll show you how it looks when you have this as more of a lounge area. But I'm sure this will seat four people comfortably. My husband and I have plenty of room here, a great spot for dinner. A feature that we do like about this table is there is a little lever underneath here that gives you the ability to slide this table to and fro. The table does rotate as well, so it gives you a little bit of flexibility. So if you know you want to see additional people back there, um, you need a little bit more room, you can go ahead and just slide that. I do recommend that you lock that back in place when you are traveling so that it, the table's not sliding uh, back and forth. We're going to put this into the dinette position, but I just want to show you how you can adjust the tabletop height. There are two pinch type clips right here. And then the table itself, you just wiggle it in the middle and it's on hydraulic. And that allows you uh, to put that into the, the alternate bed slash lounge area, which we're going to do for you and show you what that looks like. So after lifting the cushions up out of the way, you can uh, loosen the, the tabletop on those legs. It's kind of a push down, rotate kind of motion to get it back into that spot. And when you get to the bottom, make sure you clamp those clamps so your table doesn't rise up underneath the bed. And go ahead and just refit your cushions over this area. And one more cushion. We had a similar specialty cushion in our last trailer. And it was a bit of a pain in the butt trying to figure out where you're gonna keep it all the time. That fits nicely back there. So that gives you this whole area that serves as a bed and or a lounge. Now I'm five foot eight, so you could very easily 
sleep someone very easily up to six foot tall without much trouble. Maybe two kids or two adults that like each other. But for us, this is pretty much the corner here, my favorite spot. Get your arms up and relax. Usually with some Riesling. You should admit that. Hopefully. Right. And look at these windows. You want privacy? Don't really have to worry about that too much in Airstream when it's light out because these windows, nobody can really see inside. In the evening, if you want a little privacy, roll down your windows or close your curtains. Another thing that I love in here is our refrigerator. I did buy these things. I want to say they're in our Amazon store as well to maximize. Right now, we're, uh, we're home. We're hitting the road soon, but haven't filled up the fridge or the freezer, but plenty of space. Look at this up here. Nice space for that. We have another little hidden compartment down here. Kind of keep some odds and ends. Then look at all this storage. Keep our plates. Can't lift that up, but I got these to hold our plates. Keeps everything in the right place. And look how cute these are. I had to go with a little flamingo plates. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, this over here. Great spot. Keep our uh, seasonings here and then our drinkware on this side. Above the dinette, there's more storage. Yes, but wait, there's more. And this is where, you know, more odds and ends, our tea, because my husband must have tea every day. And this over here is where we keep our electronics. Uh, yes, I'm a Golden Girls fanatic, so I have uh, the full series here. Here is our control section here. Here's our control panel for our radio. And I got to tell you, it's fantastic. Works great with our Bluetooth. And when we're playing this, you can hear it all through the RV and when you're outside. Now, there's the Bluetooth player. That's how I'm going to play my Golden Girls. And there's two plugs on the side too. Uh, one is an inverter, inverter circuit. Oh, and I forgot to mention, there's uh, an inverter plug under the dinette. So if you're boondocking, you can use those plugs. The fridge in our uh, Globetrotter is a three-way fridge. So you have multiple settings here. It can run off propane, uh, shore power, and also battery. Least efficient is battery in this particular setup. Even though we have lithium batteries, it still does a specific amount of draw. It takes a while to cool down. So uh, you want to put this on the day before long trips to make sure everything is great. I utilize a uh, electronic temperature monitor, Ingbird, uh, Bluetooth's right to my phone so I can track the temperature in the refrigerator uh, all throughout the day so I know whether or not I have to worry about uh, any of our food going bad. And then freezer, I just use a traditional thermometer to keep an eye on uh, how things stay frozen in that area. Um, <clears throat> the inverter switch right here. So if you are running off of battery power, there are only a certain number of inverter uh, plugs in the coach itself above the top by the radio, under the dinette, the TV all run off the inverter um, so that you can uh, utilize this on and off. Simple green turns it on and then a hold turns it off and that puts on and off your inverter. You have your connections here uh, for your, your setup here for your uh, Dometic. This gives you air conditioning, your furnace, and your heat pump all working in electronics uh, from the, the ceiling. So cycling through gives you the different modes of the, uh... so everything is off at this point. Then you can go to the air conditioning, which won't work unless you're plugged in, uh, auto, heat pump, which will only uh, work off of the air conditioning when that works, the furnace, which is propane fired, um, and then just an overall fan. Uh, they recommend you cycle all the way through to off before you turn everything off so that uh, you don't have any hot spots sitting in the tubes and all that. And then a simple touch. You can check the interior temperature. Everything works pretty much similar to your, uh, you know, your settings at home. 
Uh, we no longer utilize this. This was the monitor, battery monitor and everything for the solar setup, but we went to a Victron setup. Uh, I did that in a prior video when I did an upgrade on the solar and lithium. We'll link that video above. So now that all comes via Bluetooth on my phone. Under the fridge gives us our uh, breaker box here for all of our uh, 110 connections and also of our fuses for our 12 volt system. And this is a propane uh, gas monitoring device. Underneath that is your charge converter. Had to swap that out too when we went to lithiums. Um, that'll be in that video so that we can charge our lithium batteries all the way. The coach comes with four speakers, two here in the dinette and two up front in the bed area. Uh, give you that nice uh, TV watching surround kind of sound and a subwoofer which is under this side. There is under dinette storage areas here accessible um, from the top as well as from the front. So the subwoofer is underneath there so it gives you a nice sound again here. Another example of that under storage we keep excess shoes and stuff the flooring in here stretches from side to side the entire flooring and um the same pattern all the way through du again more ducted furnace work here underneath the uh the compartments and then that leads us over here towards our kitchen kitchen comes with a three burner dometic cooktop uh propane fired stove initially it had these wire grates kind of like a you know four-sided uh, or cross and the pans would fall off of that in one of our videos on our initial upgrades i changed out these grills to a solid grill top which i like much better much better cooking uh, surface to allow for that uh, also it is a <coughs> contour power convection microwave so you have the convection aspect of this as well as a traditional microwave uh, set up here in the coach. So uh, we don't microwave, but we might use the convection part one of these days. There is a vented fan overhead with a light source and a fan to vent out. I will tell you this, as much as uh, the fan works, I do oftentimes find that it does set off the smoke detector, which is located right over here. There are times I'll take the battery out of that when I'm cooking, uh, you know, specific things uh, inside. But Nice setup for cooking. In our kitchen, we have what is, I guess, a little trash can. We don't use it as a trash can. We store stuff in it. But we also have, for all our kitchen needs, I use those drawer dividers in here as well, just to make sure everything's nice and organized. And then under the sink, we have our trash and just a place to keep some of our extra stuff. And then check out this sink. Love these covers. You don't travel with these on the uh, sink. You got to put them somewhere place safe, but they can be used as cutting boards. And then look at this thing. And check it out. Right? It makes a lot uh, makes doing your dishes a lot easier. Now, something else that I want to show you in our kitchen. We have a slide out pantry which my husband had to add a few hooks back there because on the first trip everything fell and just by adding some zip ties that's it nothing falls anymore i don't put anything too heavy in there just in case and then up here it's perfect for all our cutting boards and our drying rack and just all sort of flat things now over here command center ladies I love this because it tells my husband exactly what we have to do. Oh, look, we got to film the tour. We're doing it. And just in case you didn't know, our trailer's name is Valentina. We named it after my grandmother and with an added bonus that the word tin obviously is in the middle of Valentina. So this is our trailer, Valentina. When you come in the door from the rear coach entry, our entry door is towards the rear half of our, our camper, brings you to the main controls for the interior lights. Gives you the ability to turn on and off your lights, including the light above the door. Below that is the dimmer and awning light control, which has a full LED on the uh, awning. So it gives you a nice campsite uh, LED, as well as the dimmer switch for the ceiling lights in here. So you can adjust that as you like. Below that is the con controls for the ZipD power awning. 
We have a power awning on the uh, campsite as well as awnings on the, the passenger and rear to help keep those areas cool. I'm going to give you a full demonstration of the, uh, the awning when we do the exterior tour, which will be next. So I just wanted to touch over these. And below that you, is one of two battery con disconnects. This is the primary battery disconnect. Just by hitting this use or store switch, this connects everything in the coach except the propane leak detector that is hardwired to the batteries. I can, under the bed, I have a disconnect where I can disconnect the batteries entirely, turning everything in the coach off for storage and also ease of use if I have to make any repairs. Below that, I put in a propane tank monitoring system. Um, I did a video on my upgrades. That lets me check my propane in my tank so I know how much is sitting there. Um, so I don't have to play a guessing game as to how much I have or how much I don't have. And fire extinguisher located below that. There are some of these panels you'll notice in the Airstream. These are access panels. This particular one would put you into the backside of the shower if you need to work on the, uh, the uh, shower valve. Um, but not really something, you know, the average person is going to be messing with for the most part. Okay, the next room we want to share with you is our best room, okay? By the way, love these Turkish towels. They dry quickly. They're small. They don't take up a lot of space. Love them. And another thing I want you to take notice is that we added these shoe racks in the bathroom and by the entrance. That way it clears up all that mess by the main door. Our bathroom, usual. We used to have a wet bath. Not anymore. We have our, our uh, sink, which we added this faucet, collapsible faucet. Um, just liked it better than the old one that was here because the old one just wasn't long enough. We also have obviously our commode and we have a shower in here. But before we check out the shower, look at all the storage we have. Back here, we have this right here and then under the sink. Again, these things come in very handy. Love these. Also got these on Amazon. They're in our store down below. So plenty of space for all our toiletries. We have a mirror, comes off the wall. Just make sure you travel with it in its place. Obviously our towel hook. And now let's check out the shower. Ta-da, our shower. My husband also added a new faucet. So what you do with this is that you get it to your desired temperature, then you shut off the flow. When you put it back on, the water is at the same temperature where you initially closed it. So it really works well. And plenty of space here, as you can tell. Don't really have anything stocked in here. Uh, there's also a little shelf here, a little seating area, and a great place to hang our, uh, our toiletries in these bags. Love these bags. Not only do we use them in the camper, but also when we go to the uh, bathrooms and the campgrounds, also from Amazon. And if you want to dry something that's not too heavy, you have a little clothes hanger in here. Perfect. Inside the bathroom here, you have your C level two tank monitoring system with a indicator for your black tank, your gray tank, your fresh water tank, and also gives you a battery uh, percentage. There's your on and off switch located right here for your hot air for your water pump when you are running um, from your tanks. Below that, this system is set up with two elements for heating, propane and electric. This will illuminate red, not when it's on, which a lot of people think, but when it's having trouble uh, connecting to the propane, you'll get an illumination on here that tells you something is off. And this is your uh, light switch for your overhead lights. The toilet is a foot flush porcelain bowl. So foot flush right here on the side. Um, half to fill and full to release that. You got ducts in here for your uh, heating right here at the bottom. So to keep yourself nice and toasty warm while you're in the bathroom here. So the shower door is not uh, completely up to the ceiling. It allows for some ventilation in here. It is ducted for heat, but this allows air circulation so you can get steam and all that out. Because right over here, right outside the uh, kitchen area and right above the bathroom is another fantastic fan multi-speed with a temperature setting and an automatic closing uh, lid that will raise and lower on power. It has a motor override so you can manually crank that down. But if it was to get uh, rain on it, there's a rain sensor in there and it would automatically 
close that uh, lid. So in here is a fuse. In the event something was to go wrong, this fuse would pop and then it would uh, sacrifice rather than burning out the motor on the fan, it would blow out that fuse and then you could just swap that out. And if you want a little privacy while you're in the bedroom, there's a curtain. Now it's held with Velcro, three sets of Velcro. Unsnap them and you got your privacy. If you're enjoying our tour, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Loving Life Hitched Up. Give us a thumbs up and hit that bell notification so you know when our video is coming out next week, we're going to have a tour of the outside of the trailer where we're going to show you the awning and the bike rack and just all the cool things that make this baby work. Thank you for visiting our home today. We hope you enjoyed the tour. And remember, when you're out there loving life, do it hitched up.